Hi, my name is Rod and this is the Orcaboat Shop and this is going to be the first of a series of episodes on building the Acorn Dinghy, uh, the Acorn Sailing Skiff, the 11.9. So uh, let's get started and show you what I've got done so far. First step in putting together the Acorn uh, Dinghy is setting up the strong back. So all I've done is I've cut out some 2x4s, some uh, 1x4 strapping, and I'm using a pretty robust uh, 2x12 here. It didn't really call for that, but I have another use for this uh, 2x12 when it's done. So I needed one anyways, so I thought I might as well just use it for this structure. So the beam, or the, 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 the ladder frame here, is a little over 11 feet long, and I have put some cross bracing across here in 2x4s inside 24 inches. So that's kept in the, keeping the frame you know, equidistant apart. I've got a few longer ones down below. I have set some cross bracing, diagonal cross bracings on the end. And because I didn't really want this thing to be able to rack a little bit sort of this way too much, I laid a couple of cross bracings underneath here using the 1x4s. Now my shop is pretty level, not 100%, uh, could be better I suppose, but uh, you know it's a pretty level floor here. The unfortunate part is I don't really want to be drilling into my cement here to set some anchors in. Uh, to hold this thing level, it's pretty solid, I don't think this is going to move um, you know, on the floor and I certainly don't think that it's going to become unlevel. I don't think that these 2x12s are going to start to uh, warp on me, hopefully not. They've been uh, you know, kiln dried lumber obviously, but I bought it from an indoor uh, lumber yard so it hasn't been sitting out in the rain. And then we're just going to check for level across. So even though I just dropped this on the floor here, it's actually pretty level amidship, or I mean a thwartship. Could use a little bit of wedging here and there which I'll adjust as, uh, you know, as we set up the forms. And it's, being that it's 2 by 12, it's uh, pretty level you know, fore and aft on the beam itself as well. So this is the structure that the forms will be set up on. I will be laying a couple of 2 by 2s across here at the specified spacing and, uh, and then running string lines and center lines down here so we can set up the molds. Now that my strong back ladder is uh, solidly built and level to the floor, just going to mark off where all of these station molds need to go. I'm going to start at the aft perpendicular or at the very end of the longitudinal uh, stringers here. In the first one, they're 14 inches apart. And I'm just going to double check all of those to make sure I'm actually multiplying correctly. 14, 14. See, there you go, 16. Okay, Rod. Seem to have trouble with the 14 multiplication table. And that's going to allow for when the stem comes down here to be able to overhang the end of the beam. Before I lay any cross balls on my ladder frame to accept the forms, I'm actually going to draw the forms out on some door skin cheap ply. I want to like to make some patterns first. I can then cut my patterns, compare it to the actual plans, and then I can have these kept for, you know, if I needed to build another boat down in the future, uh, I've got the patterns for all of the molds. So what I've done here is I have creased this piece of paper right at the, uh, basically the top of the building frame. So this edge here is what's going to sit uh, vertical on top of the ladder frame. Put some push pins into here and then I have laid down some carbon paper underneath. First thing I can do is to draw in the center line with a ruler. That's going to be easy to do. Add in the shear line. I'm doing uh, station number three at the moment. This being a vertical line here, I can just draw straight down. 
and then I am just going to trace with my pencil the best I can station number three. Making sure the paper doesn't move, shouldn't move with all the push pins in, but as I run my pencil through here I can kind of bunch up and fold paper. And then we have some markings here as to where the lands will be for each plank. There's seven planks throughout this hull on either side. So I want to make sure I have those marked there. I can transfer onto my forms when I cut them out. And lastly, the keelson sits in a notch into the top of the frame here, or the top of the mold I should say. And that would have to be cut out. Before I lift my paper, I want to make sure I have everything marked that I need to mark. All right, let's have a look see. So we just pull a couple of pins here. I'm not going to take those pins out in case I need to put it back in. And that's mold. So we're going to call this is the acorn 11 foot 9 and this is station number 3. Now we're just going to repeat that process for six more molds and then I'll cut these out. And that is all nine molds and the transom drawn out on two sheets of uh, door skin. Next step will be to cut them out. With my patterns cut out and uh, sanded on my disc sander, I'm just going to line them up now to just see how it matches up with the patterns. I can actually get this curvature here to line up very nicely in all my marks where the plank lands are. All I really need to do here is my baseline is a little off and that just goes back to me trying to line up the edge of this paper with the edge of the plywood and I don't even think the plywood was all that uh, straight because I think it was an off cut. So I can mark this and I can plane down by hand with a block plane these lines down to the uh, vertical and horizontal center lines. And I will do this for every pattern so they all match up with the plans perfectly. I now have all nine forms. Here we've got uh, one through uh, five, and over here is uh, six through nine and the uh, transom. So these are the half pattern forms of which we'll now be laying out onto the uh, five eighths plywood and cutting out all of the, the proper forms. One advantage of having or making the half patterns is I can try to be as efficient as possible on laying down the patterns onto my plywood and figuring out how I can uh, get the most uh, use out of it. I think as much as I use two small sheets of the uh, thin ply here just to make the patterns, it was kind of wasteful because I knew that I was just going to be using that for other things, but now I'm pretty sure I can get uh, all of the nine patterns on the two sheets of plywood by laying them out here and flipping them over in the opposite direction and using the straight edge for the baseline we're good. And now that I know approximately where they're going to go, I can use the edge of the plywood here using my square, bring this up and draw up, which will be the vertical center line. Bring the pattern over to it. Nice and flush with the bottom of the plywood here. So that's our building platform baseline. And I can then just trace this pattern over there and again mark all of the locations of the shear line where all the plank lands will be. 
Now we can flip the pattern over, trace the other half. And by using two halves of the pattern instead of one whole, you can be rest assured that one side is going to be exactly the same as the other side. And I will just continue to do that for all of the patterns. these molds or maybe both. I don't know how much time we'll get to in the next week. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.